<laughs> All right. Our first song this morning is, is a video uh, song, but it's called Death Was Arrested, and y'all are all familiar with it, but I want to remind you that the, um, the point of the song is that the wages of sin is death, and we're all sinners. We all are caught under the, the penalty of sin and with, without hope because God is holy. He's perfect in holiness, and he cannot let any sin go unpunished. And the wages of sin is death. So here we are, no hope, no way to escape, and then Jesus, God himself, intervened and said, I know a way, and I can pay the, par pay the price of their sins against the holy God. And so that's what we're going to sing about. Let's stand together. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope, no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains And my orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested and my life began I'm a prisoner no more My shame was a ransom He faithfully bore He canceled my debt And he called me his friend When death was arrested And my life began Oh, your grace so free Washes over Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, you grace so free washes over.
be back. We've been traveling a little bit, so we're back now. Um, certainly missed our church family. Uh, just a few announcements, and I'm a couple of people, and I want to add some things to it. Just, uh, you know, prayer request list here. Uh, before we get into that, there's obviously, if you're new, there's a visitor card in the pews there if you're interested. Uh, we'd certainly love to talk with you, share some information. Um, prayer request there, you know, just uh, keep this with you. I know uh, uh, Sharon's brother is on here and, and, and others there, but, you know, certainly need uh, prayer and healing. Uh, certainly a praise there for Jackie Allen. Looks like uh, some good news there. Uh, certainly uh, praise God for that. Uh, coming up, just a few things. Uh, we have Palm Sunday pretty soon, uh, I guess next Sunday. Um, and there will be a presentation. I'll, uh, Evan and I will share a little bit about that in just a minute. Uh, Easter is coming up on the 31st. And a little further out, I know John's not here, but there's a car show and fish fry. Uh, that was a big fundraiser last year for youth. I think they raised around $10,000 or something like that. So it was a really big, big thing there. So, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. So a lot of information there. So more will be coming with that for sure. Um, I know, Amber, you wanted to share a little bit about VBS. Go ahead. You want to come up? Date for VBS um, will be the Tuesday, the May 28th through Friday, the 31st. So this is the Tuesday through Friday right after um, Memorial Day. And so Valley View schools get out like on the 16th. So we'll have a whole week or so for teachers to prep and stuff. And it's going to be in the evening again, 530 to 830. And then instead of doing a big family fun night on Friday night, we're going to just bring that into Sunday kind of like we used to do before I try to do something different, where we would encourage um, all the kids to bring their uh, parents and kind of um, have that kind of our focus of the morning of, um, of the church uh, service on Sunday. So that um, kind of a little bit different, just trying to change things up a little bit. So, um, but that's uh, Tuesday the 28th uh, through Friday the 31st um, in the evening. And then um, it's uh, our, it's called Breaker Rock Beach this summer. Um, and it's, um, I really think it's a very pertinent lesson. It's uh, God's rock, solid truth in a world of shifting sand. So, sifting, shifting, sifting, shifting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Looks like swifting on here, but um, shifting sand. So, just that God is our solid rock in in the truth. And so I'm really excited about that. I'm always excited about Bible school, but I'm really excited about this one. And I think it's very pertinent for our world um, today. And so the reason that I'm telling you is because I have a sign up list. And hopefully, also with doing it in the end of May, is maybe we can get on people's calendar before June when everybody wants to go on vacation. And um, so that's why we do it in the evening. And that's why we do it. Um, that's why we're going to try it in May this year. And so I. There are plenty, it's wide open. So if you are interested in um, teaching or helping or crafts or decorations or any of that stuff, I'm going to have sign-up sheets back here. So, um, you know, maybe there's a prize for the person that puts their name on the list first. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> but, I don't know. So, but just uh, be praying about that in a way that you can be involved here. Uh, VBS is such an important uh, ministry for our church here in the community. So. Just wanted to let you know that. And then uh, I'll pray real quick, and I know, Evan, you want to share a little bit about next Sunday. So, uh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the day. Thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house to study your word. I just ask you to be with those that uh, we've mentioned on our prayer request list, those that are uh, uh, needing your healing, needing uh, medical help. Uh, we just lift uh, them up to you now. Uh, ask you to be with those that have lost family members late recently. Uh, just... Uh, Dealing with that loss, we lift them up to you. Uh, just those that uh, maybe need you now and, and don't know where to go, maybe those who are seeking uh, guidance in their lives, we just lift them up and we ask a blessing upon them. We ask that uh, we would be a light in our community. Uh, those would see something in us that they would ask and, and want to know more about you and this grace that we have received, uh, even uh, undeserving. We just thank you for that. Uh, just uh, ask you to be with our military, men and women, Law enforcement, those serving in our community, those away from their families, just the, the 
day in, day out sacrifices they make uh, for the freedoms that we enjoy. Uh, we just appreciate that, all that they do and their willingness to step forward and to do that. These things we ask for in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good morning. Good to see you all here this morning. Thank you, Kyle Amber. Looking forward to VBS. Good time to get the kids to learn and share the good news of Jesus with others, friends and family. And uh, I want to talk to, you, talk to you a little bit more about this Excavating Emmanuel. Uh, it's on your back of your bulletin. Um, we're going to be discussing the resting place of the risen Savior. And so in, in Jerusalem, there are more than one site that's considered by many to be the place of Jesus' uh, crucifixion and burial. And uh, we're going to look into um, the Bible, historical texts, archaeological data, try to point us to compare these, these sites and try to point us to the, the true cross, the true location. So uh, more complicated than, <laughs> than I can just sit here and say. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. It's, it's a busy city. And so uh, destruction layer upon destruction layer, so much destruction there that it's, it's hard to find the true place. But we're going to dig into that. Uh, so hopefully see you all here next Sunday evening for that 6 p.m. And uh, we'll try to make this, we'll try to record it, maybe live if some people can't make it. All right, let's go to today's scripture. And that is in Psalm 105. Psalm 105, we're going to look at 1 through 5. How many of y'all have a thankful heart this morning? Aren't we blessed? He says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him. Sing praises to Him. Tell of all His wondrous works. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His presence continually. I love that. Continually. How many times do we seek His presence? Just maybe a couple of days a week. Maybe just Sundays. It says continually. I love that. Uh, Rick, would you come lead us in, in worship, please? In the worship songs. We have a God who's worthy. Let's stand together. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love condemned unclean how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me for me it was in the garden he prayed, not my will, but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs, but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my love for me. He took my sins and sorrows. He made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall Someday. 
in glory his face i at last shall see invite one of our ushers to come forward and ask God's blessing on the offering. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come together as a group of believers and share in this time of fellowship, this time of praise and worship and learning. Lord, I pray for Evan as he brings us the word that you would open his heart and that the message would be from on high from you and that we would take it to heart, that we would use it in our daily walks. We pray for this offering, that it would meet every need. We pray for those, Lord, that are having a hard time, that are going through struggles. I just pray, Father, for those that are sick, recovering. Just pray you would add your blessings, Lord, that you would heal their bodies and bring them back to us as soon as possible. Lord, we do love you, and we thank you for everybody here and all the Lord's people said. Bye. 
how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Temptations, hidden snares often take us unawares, and our hearts are made to bleed for some thoughtless word or deed, and we wonder why the test when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by. by Thank you. That was beautiful. Uh, today's sermon is called Making a Statement. And uh, we're going to be looking at um, John chapter 11, starting in verse 55, and then also, if you'll put a finger on Luke 19, we'll be looking at those two different ones and and uh, making a statement. So we're, we'll be looking at... Um, the week of uh, Passion Week, triumphal entry on that day, Jesus makes his appearance in Jerusalem. And uh, so making a statement, that can be, I'm sure you all have heard that, that phrase, it can be making you know, a facial expression, uh, an act of service, maybe it's body language. You know, if you're slouching, you're, you're telling somebody without words that you're tired or you're lazy, one. I don't know. <laughs> um, Maybe it's a, a so an act of service. You don't have to have any words. You're just doing a good deed for somebody. Um, you know, we learn something from that person without them saying a word. I'm assuming most of you have heard the phrase, actions speak louder than words. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we learn by uh, watching someone's actions. We, they're observing them. Um, how many of you? How many of you learn from your your mother and your father just by watching them, observing them? Yeah. Um, so last week, you know, we looked at the transfiguration of Jesus, and he's on this high mountain with uh, Peter, and he takes along with him James um, and and John, and they have this encounter with uh, Elijah and Moses, and finally, a voice God uh, talks to them from the cloud on top of that mountain. And so from there, Jesus is slowly making his way to Jerusalem, his last visit to Jerusalem in his ministry there. And uh, he passes along through Jericho on the way. Um, and he comes to the Mount of Olives and Bethany and Bethage, two villages there uh, on the south side of uh, the Mount of Olives. And so let's pick up reading here in John uh, chapter 11. John 11, starting with verse 55. He says, Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus and saying to one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think? That he will not come to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he should let them know so that they might arrest him. But I'd like to point out at the very beginning of this, verse 55, many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. 
Um, you know, every year the Passover, they would come up there to the temple, some to purify, some for the feast, some to worship, um, give an offering. And, um, you know, some would travel half a day, maybe days to get there. It's not, a, it's not easy getting there <laughs> to the temple. Um, some on foot, some maybe had a donkey, I don't know. But it wasn't an easy task, and it took preparation. Um, they really had the want to go, right? Um, when I was in Jerusalem about a year and a half ago, during the summer, it was a time of Tisha B'Av, Tisha B'Av, a time where, where the Jews would mourn the destruction of the temple. And so for three weeks, they're in, in mourning, and I would witness several of my friends would uh, be out early in the morning saying a prayer of, and, and reading scripture of uh, lamenting. Um, and they would do this every morning for about three weeks. And then I went up to the, near the temple, uh, right outside the, um, the Jaffa Gate, and I watched hundreds of of Jews pouring in, walking to their uh, to the synagogue there by the temple, all dressed in you know in black. This is in August, so I would compare it to going to a graveside funeral in Texas in August. Okay, <laughs> but they're they're walking fastly. I mean, they got to be sweating because you know the felt hats and all the robe stuff they get on, and uh, but I didn't see them. They did, you know, just by observing them, they didn't look like they were being forced to go. They looked like they were eager to get there, eager to worship. Um, I can't help but to think of the many excuses that we sometimes come up with not to come to worship corporately. You know, we, we can get to church much easier than the Jews do, than they did, or they do today. They have to, it's, it's really hard to park around the area. You have park, some parking uh, buildings, but it's just much easier to walk in some cases. But, I mean, some of them were walking miles to get there. So it took a while. Um, so some of these excuses that we come up with, you know, they're endless. <laughs> um it really comes down to a, a really a lack of hunger for God. And this is really directed to Christians that, you know, they say they just stopped going to church or haven't been in a while. Uh, some put their own interests before God. And it's so important to be with fellow Christians, singing, singing songs and worship Him corporately. He is more glorified when we are singing together. And, and he's glorified when you sing to him privately in worship. But even more so, he's glorified when we sing corporately. The Rabbi Hebrew says in 1025, Let us not give up the meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. To give up the disciplined habit of, of assembling physically in person um, with other believers is the development of an unchristian habit you know we're also making a statement without words when we do this whether we attend or not in both cases we're making a statement um, without a word by worshiping publicly you're 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 ministering to others um, in the congregation just by being here you're, you're teaching children how to worship David Clarkson, he was a, a Puritan minister uh, in the late 1600s, early 1700s in that time frame. And he said this about public and private worship. What you do in public worship, do it with all your might. Shake off that slothful, indifferent, lukewarm temper, which is so odious to God. Think it not enough to present your bodies before the Lord. The worship of the body is but the carcass of worship. It is the soul worship that is the soul of worship. I like that. Those that draw near with their lips only shall find God far enough from them. Not only lips and mouth and tongue, 
but mind, heart, and affections. Not only knee and hand and eye, but heart conscience and memory must be pressed to attend upon God in public worship. Not only my flesh longs for thee, but my soul thirsts for thee. Then will the Lord draw near when her whole man waits on him. Then will the Lord be found when we seek him with her whole heart. Now, having said that, public worship does not excuse uh, us from private worship. We must not only worship him in public, but throughout the week in private. Um, we can't expect the flames of, of a worship of God to burn brightly in public on the Lord's day when they barely flicker uh, for him in secret on other days. Well, let's move on to John 12, verse 1. John 12, 1. It says that six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for, there, for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment uh, made from pure nard and anointed the, feet, anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, who was about to betray him, said, Why was the ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. So Jesus came to Bethany from Jericho, this region, and had supper. And Mary anoints Jesus' feet with this expensive perfume, pure nard. And um, it says that Lazarus was there. This Lazarus who was raised from the dead by Jesus not long before this. Now Matthew and Mark placed this event uh, the day before the Last Supper, which is a few days later. Um, but here in John, it's placed the day before the triumphal entry. You know, Jesus was at Bethany uh, the day before the triumphal entry. And so this fits with John's account. But the Gospels say that each day of that week, Jesus would, at that night, he would cross the Kidron Valley and go over towards the Mount of Olives and area of Bethany. And that's where he would sleep during that week. And so... It's possible, you know, um, for it to take place after the triumphal entry as well, any time that week. Um, so John makes this point of Judas, uh, which sometimes steal from the money bag, right? And so his, his mind tended to be focused on money. He, um, let me read this verse 4 through 6 again. Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples who was about to betray him, said, Why was the ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. So this author, John, who was there, is calling him out. <laughs> He's calling Judas out. But Judas didn't get it, right? He he was thinking of the worldly things instead of having his mind set on heavenly things. And um, this is why in John 12, Jesus defended this act of kindness of, of Mary. But this was more than just an act of kindness that Mary is showing here. She knew that this could be the last time she would see Jesus. She believed him. She believed his teachings that he was, he was prepping them for this day. It says in verse 7, Jesus said, leave her alone. She, so she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. So Mary made a statement without saying a word. 
I'm doing what I can for my, my Lord to prepare him for burial. If you were given just a, a couple of days to live, your family and friends knew it, what they wouldn't do for you. So what if this, this pure nard cost me a year's wages? My Jesus is worth it. And by the way, this 300 denarii is a year's wages. What do we have to offer King Jesus? Have you offered yourself? Have you made him Lord of all your possessions? Is he Lord of your bank account? He should be Lord of, of all of us. All of us, but all of us, right? Every part of us, and, and not just on Sundays. Every day, every crevice of our lives, He should be Lord over. We should be like Mary and come to Him on our knees, saying, everything I have, I lay at Your feet, Lord. Everything I have is Yours. You created me. You created all my possessions. It's all yours. I give it back to you in return. I offer you my life. And in return, we have eternity through him. So we offer him ourselves because he is all we need. Amen? He is all we need. John 12 and verse 9 it says that when the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. So this is another reason they're, they're wanting to kill Jesus, because many of the Jews were believing, they, they witnessed this Lazarus who was dead, now raised to life, and Jesus made this miracle happen. So many of the Jews are leaving, uh, leaving the, the synagogue and leaving this and going to follow Jesus. So they had another reason they wanted to kill Jesus. Now I'd like to switch over to Luke 19 to pick up the story there. Luke 19, starting in verse 29. Luke 19, 29, 28. It says that when he had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever set. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. So Jesus is sitting on the colt to enter Jerusalem. Now, he, he and his disciples, maybe just the day before this, this supper, um, where the, she anoints his feet, it could have been just the day before, he's coming from, he and his disciples are coming from Jericho. And this, this area between Jericho and Jerusalem is a rough country. And in fact, it's likely the, the wilderness that Jesus was in the 40 days of temptation. Um, and so... <laughs> At, at Jericho, it, there's, a, there's a mosaic sign there that says the, the lowest city on earth. And it's, I think it says 1,300 below sea level. Um, and so he's making this, this rise, continually rise, all the way up to Jerusalem, which is over 2,000, I think it's around 2,500 above sea level. So this is a huge, <laughs> this is a huge climb. And they're, I mean, no doubt they're exhausted. Um, But Jesus here now is making a powerful statement without words. 
was Jesus getting on this, this, this young donkey to ride to Jerusalem because he was physically tired? I'm sure he was tired, but that's not the reason. Verse 36. As he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. And he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. I mean, king, when kings, you know, kings had to maintain an image, right? Um, as a, a mighty warrior. And, and kings were known to ride on the best stallions in the country, uh, indicating rulers by the sword. It is believed that when is an Israelite or a Judahite king uh, rode into the city, returning from a battle, um, part of this uh, uh, Psalm 118, which is, is mentioned here, uh, was shouted to praise the king uh, for his success, and celebration followed. Um, this is no ordinary king on this day that's entering the city. Jesus is coming as a ruler of peace, not by sword, not by might. Jesus had come proclaiming the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of man. He had come not for war, but for peace. Jesus came in humility and in gentleness and not with pride. And by riding this, this, young donkey, this young donkey, he was fulfilling prophecy. Jesus is making a statement without saying a word. The multitude of disciples are saying to him, in fact, they were shouting it, right? Zechariah 9.9 9 says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Psalm 118.26, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, why were they shouting this? The specific verse, one eighteen twenty six. 26. Well, this, this, this verse is the language of those who had charge over the sanctuary for years, addressing anyone who came and um, in the name of the Lord to present a thank offering. It's saying welcome. It's, it's giving assurance to them that's giving an offering that their, their offering is acceptable to the Lord. So the disciples are shouting, saying, Thank you, Lord. You're presenting yourself as a to the sanctuary. <laughs> and no greater offering than Jesus himself has ever been given. And they saw Jesus giving himself just a few days later as the perfect lamb. The perfect atonement for sins. If the disciples would not shout this out and bear witness that Jesus Christ is the King, the Messiah that they've been hoping for, the very stone would cry out. It says in verse 39, And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. The very stones in this wall, in this temple, would cry out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. If they were silent, the stones would cry out. This reminds me that after Jesus' resurrection and the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, and, and Peter and um, John are going up near the temple, and they're, they're telling all the people about, about Jesus. And some of, the, some of the Pharisees, the Jews, are coming to them, hey, you can't be talking about this. We won't allow this. 
And he says here in Acts 4, Acts 4, verse 19 and 20, it says, Whether it is right in the sight of God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. We cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. In other words, no matter what you do to us, we will not stop proclaiming Jesus Christ. No matter what, we have to tell others about Jesus. No one can silence us. There's a movie called Risen. Has anybody heard of this movie, Risen? Um, there's a, a part in there towards the end. Peter tells this Roman cohort who had become a believer, um, tells him, hey, come fish with us. Peter says this. Come fish for men with us. And uh, he says, um, how, Peter says, how can we do anything else now? How can we do anything else but tell people about Christ? About how he, he changed our lives. About the peace that he brings. About the joy that he brings. About the eternal life he promises. About the mercy that he gave each and every one of us. Now in verse 41 it says, When he drew near and saw the city... He wept over it, <clears throat> saying, Would that you, even you, Jerusalem, had known on this day the things that make for peace. He himself was that peace. Many didn't know it. Those that would just days later ridicule him, reject him, crucify him, swear three times that they never knew him. <laughs> the peace was right before them, and Satan had blinded their eyes to see it, from seeing who he really was and why he came. <laughs> Have you made Jesus your peace? Is Satan blinding your eyes to see who he really is? By making Him the Lord of your life every day, continually, as we read earlier in Psalm 105? Or is He someone we just kind of come to on Sunday when it's, you know, when it's easy to, to come to Him, whenever it's convenient? We must make Him Lord of all of our life. And just remember, have a time of invitation and re a time of response to make Him Lord of all your life. What do you have to offer Him? What He wants is all of you. He wants to be Lord of all your life. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, forgive us, Father, where we have failed you. Forgive us, Father, when we have not made you Lord of every part of our lives. Forgive us when we have not put you first, made you the priority, top of the list. Forgive us when we have coming up with, with excuses not to worship you. Forgive us when we have sought our own interests, when we should be seeking the interests that you have laid upon our lives, the, the will on our lives, the purpose, the calling. Father God, you know what's best for our lives. Help us to turn that over to you if we haven't already. Get right with you to today. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
you're welcome to sing along if you know it or just sit here and, and pray to God in time of silence. Far more beautiful, more precious than the ore. The sum of my desires and the fullness of my joy. Thank you, Spirit. It was a blessing to see you all here again this morning. Uh, we have any other announcements? Anybody before we dismiss? No? All right. Um, let's see. Tommy, would you mind closing some prayer, please? Thank you. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to come and be in this place and to hear your word proclaimed. Lord, we just thank you for the sacrifice you made for us, Lord, for going to the cross and all that led up to that, Lord, how we've learned today the, the, the praise and offering, Lord, that were given to you through the voices of the people there. And Lord, just let us be that kind of voice that we lift up your name and proclaim your name and proclaim you are God and holy. And Lord, today I just pray that you would be with those that are not here and just watch over them that are traveling, those that are sick, those that are Lord, just help us to do the things that we need you to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Am